this list is a list of contradictions of the Bible, apparently. And yet here we have the very list having a contradiction or having a double up, having a copy and paste, and yet they are the ones accusing the Bible of having the contradictions. Perfect. Ready to dive into the topic? I am. We're going to do contradiction number nine. And can you introduce this for us, please? Sure. Welcome to Morning Star Quest. Today, we're exploring contradiction number nine in our series, diving deep into one of the alleged inconsistencies in the Bible. Let's uncover the truth together and see how this supposed contradiction fits into the broader picture of Scripture. Why, thank you. Thanks, Cosmo. All right, we are going to get into contradiction number nine. Now, we have been going through this, and atheists have been saying that and they've put this list together. Let me just go here. There are 439 apparent contradictions in the Bible. Now, I've got to say, I'm a little bit disappointed in this one got this it. week. Sounds like you're setting up the context yes. for discussing the specific contradiction. How's yes. it going so far? Well, good, but I've come into a little bit of a problem, Cosmo. Now, you probably can't, you can't see this, but... Number seven was how long was the Ark of the Covenant at Abinadab's house? Now, I did the, the eighth one last week, and we're up to number nine. But we have a problem. We have the same one, how long was the Ark of the Covenant at Abinadab's house? How could, how could anyone get this doubled up? I don't it know. It sounds like there might have been an error in the list. I think so. Numbering. Hey, does that mean that you might this... want to double check your sources or perhaps reframe it as a deeper dive into no. that specific contradiction if it's being repeated? How do you want to handle this in your video? Well, I actually want to say in this atheist list, there is a contradiction in itself. Is this a contradiction of the atheists list? And they are accusing the boy. Oh, I, I probably shouldn't. I'm being silly, of course, but you know, errors happen and it's okay. We will let them have their errors because well, they're accusing us of having errors in the That's Bible. That's a good way to handle but, it. You can point out the mistake <clears throat> and then pivot to discuss the implications of such errors in like these, lists like these. It also makes for a good talking point about the importance of careful research. And it is. And maybe I was going to jump into number nine, but maybe I'll make this one purely just a random one that here we have some... That could work. You yeah. could address the error and then use it as a chance to discuss how careful examination is crucial when dealing with supposed contradictions. It so, could also be an opportunity to delve into how these kinds of mistakes can affect the credibility of such lists. Well, exactly. And this list is a list of contradictions of the Bible, apparently. And yet here we have the very list having a contradiction or having a double up, having a copy and paste. Um, it's the same verses. It's the same whole thing. And yet they are the ones accusing the Bible of having the contradictions. And yet here we have some simple contradictions that happen in the Bible. They might duplicate something and just get it slightly wrong or something. And they say that's a contradiction, that God doesn't exist. And I guess that's just what I want to say today. Exactly. It highlights how <laughs> even critics can make mistakes in their claims. It also underscores the importance of thorough research and careful analysis, whether you're examining the Bible or any other source. Showing and this can help your viewers see how critical thinking applies to both sides of the argument. And you know what? I think that is a very valid point. We need to be okay with sometimes things not quite matching up, even though so far I'm up to number nine and I haven't found, well, let's just say eight, but I haven't found any contradictions yet. And I'm still going to go through this list. Don't you worry about that. But I want to get into this and to say... Absolutely. It's crucial to approach <clears throat> these discussions with an open mind and a critical eye. It's good to stay thorough and keep exploring the list, even if you haven't found contradictions so far. This thoroughness adds credibility to your work and can provide valuable insights to your viewers. Thanks, Cosmo. And you know what? 
with um, this list has obviously been trying to say, okay, we're going to shake people's faith. I'm going through this and it's actually deepening my faith. It's actually giving me more conviction. So I want to say thank you to the atheists who put this list together because it is making me realize that Christ, not just Christianity, but God does exist. Jesus is the answer for the whole Bible, for humanity dying on the cross. This is just proving the point. So thank you. Thank you so much for this list because it is deepening my faith and I just and I'm finding out so much more in the Bible that stuff is making more sense and it's great. So thank you very much. Go do something awesome for God. And there are there are some contradictions over there that I'm going to investigate and Still, I think they're not quite contradictions, but, you know, some of them are complementary. Some of them are just numbers different in a different spot. Who cares? Jesus is Lord. That's a powerful perspective, Craig. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's wonderful to hear how this process is strengthening your faith and deepening your understanding. Thank you. It's great to approach these challenges with such a positive and open attitude. Keep up the fantastic work, and I'm sure your insights will resonate with many viewers. Thanks, Cosmo. Catch you later, guys. Bye.